Welcome, Welcome to your morning cup with iBenz Academy. I'm Kara. And I'm Ash. And we're Cash. Hey. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Clearly, so, you can see we're on Zoom again, huh? Yes, we are on Zoom. I'm traveling again. This time I'm in the warm, sunny state of Arizona in the southwest of the United States. A little different from Toronto, huh? Quite different. Yeah. (laughs) A lot more desert. (laughs) Yes. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. And this week we all discovered something new. So hopefully we made a wish that edge magic was something new with it. But we had a new podcast. Woo for Thought came out this week by Larry and Amelia, and Woo for Thought covered importances, and it was actually directly related to an article on the Woo for Thought, which comes out once a month in a Substack that Amelia wrote just about the nature of importances. So with that, we're going to talk about importances. What's important? <laughs> What's our priority? Yeah, it's a really it's a really important thing to be aware of because our importances are what drive us, right? And if we don't have a good, clear, conscious perspective of what our importances are, it's very easy to get steered in a direction that maybe we don't want to go. So we have some stories we'd like to share about importances that, you know, maybe have come to light that we realize we didn't want and ones that we do. And even like, the difference between subconsciously and consciously choosing them. So really fascinating topic and check out the Woo for Thought article if you haven't already. It's a yes. very nice read. Yes. Cool. Well, so, oh, go ahead. Let's go say um, one, uh, one importance that's been top of mind for me the last couple years, maybe longer, is the importance of having children. So I'll share that I'm in my 30s now. uh, And when I was in my 20s, having children was like the worst thing on the planet. It was literally the worst thing that could happen to a modern woman, a woman who wants to have a career or dreams or really any happiness whatsoever. (laughs) That was the importance, the story that I agreed to. Uh, and we won't go into the reasons of how and why, but it that that's how it was. I made very clear life decisions around the importance of not getting pregnant. This include like physical health choices. It included like what I did with my time, like the jobs I took or going to university, where I lived. And a lot of those decisions were based on the fact that children are expensive and we can't afford it. And, you know, it's just, you're just miserable the whole time. So why would you want to have that experience? So it was very important for me not to have children. And then long story short, let's say a decade goes by, I start to, you know, process some stuff like fears and firewalls and get in touch and connect with my physical body, realizing that she has her own desires and wants. And then I was surprised to learn (laughs) that actually a big reason why I decided to incarnate in this uh, lifetime and to be a woman was to have children. It was like a, a, an importance that I took in between lives and part of my overall lifetime plan. So I got really curious. I was like, how did that happen? (laughs) And I was very surprised. And then I started to realize that there are a lot of agendas out there, you could say, around overpopulation, depopulation. And I think my target audience was heavily marketed (laughs) to. So I ate up that importance and took it full on. And it wasn't until I started to look at that programming and tap into like what I feel and what I want that I realized, wow. Actually, what is important to me is to have an experience of having children in this lifetime. I I personally just haven't had that many or that many recently of um, being a mother. And it's something I signed up for. It's one of the experiences I wanted to have in this lifetime. Not the only one, of course, but it's a big one. 
So then I started to realize, oh, that importance got totally hijacked by another um, another uh, opportunity or agenda that was running. So remember, I'm not a victim. You're not a victim. These are all agreements that we've had, right? That we choose to take which importance is we want to keep. But I have to say, it's been a, a very... Uh, uh, I don't know what the right word is, um, sobering, <laughs> refreshing <laughs> to just see like at what level of depth these importances can come in from like a social or cultural or family or whatever perspective, but it doesn't matter. I still ended up taking that importance as like life decisions were made from it. And now it's completely like 180. <laughs> it's completely the opposite. So just goes to show importances can change and that's fine. So there yeah. you go. I can totally relate to that importance because I think I remember, you know, being as a younger woman, I could, I, you know, that was like the worst thing that could happen <laughs> to like having children or getting pregnant or, you know, it was like all against what I was going for in life at the time because my importances were, you know, oh, I wanted to have my career. I want to be an independent woman. I wanted to um, have a, a education and be able to just go do what I want when I want and that kind of like freedom. And, um, and there were even like religious aspects to it too. in the household I grew up in, you know, like, you don't want to have children out of wedlock. There's so many different aspects to it. And out, out similar is like, as I got older, I started to realize like, oh, well, wait, like, is that really, first of all, like the concept or idea of what it means to be a mother you know, it's totally wrong. You know, it's this disempowered like view of what it is to be a mother. Cause totally. I see mothers who have children who are obviously have children and go to school or have a career and they're very successful and, you know, they still are doing life and enjoying life. Right. So there's that element. Um, and then two, it's like the, there was agendas behind it as well. And even physical body, like, you know, as I'm, older and in my 30s my my physical body has its like uh what is it biological clock is ticking <laughs> you know so all of a sudden for my physical body the importance of having children is like ramped up right so the the yeah so it's really interesting and definitely relate to to that importance in life and and then also how it can change right it was really important at one point in time and now it's not, it's more important now to have children versus to not have children. Right. right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And the, and the importances can vary depending if it's like a soul importance or a body importance. And sometimes they don't always line up. Sometimes they do. Cause upon reflection, I think my physical body always wanted children, <laughs> you know, I just ignored her and she took a back seat and, you know, that just, I didn't listen at all. Yeah, agreed. And, you know, <laughs> that's sometimes how it goes. And we, you know, we were working on it, but it's interesting how importances or even like desires of experience can be so different between the soul and the body. But when they line up, that's probably usually when things happen and manifest, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. And it's interesting too when we think we know what our importance is. But really, like, it's like kind of like what we learn in the instant manifestation workshop. It's like, you think you know what you want, but really you're creating everything to not have it. So maybe exactly. you don't really want it, <laughs> you know? So just recently, just in a, um, an example in my life, I'm uh, looking at buying a truck and I want a truck to be able to, you know, load up the dogs, load up my kayak or my paddle board or my mountain bike and head out into, you know, the wilderness, wherever I'm going with them. And currently in my vehicle, I can have my dogs or I can have my toys. I can't have both. <laughs> you know, And that, that poses a problem for me. <laughs> I'm like, well, no, I don't want to experience it that way. So the importance is to be able to get them and go. The other element is that my my vehicle right now is becoming a dog vehicle, which means, you know, wet dogs covered in sand or mud are sitting in my car and it stinks like dog and it's like you know they chew things and <laughs> you know the puppy they so all of these things are happening and I don't like it right 
So those were my, my importances that got me thinking, okay, I need to get, I want to get a truck and I was going to get something that was just like a, you know, a car or a truck that you just, again, is like a dog truck to take you to the beach. No big deal. Don't spend that much money on it. Probably has a high like mileage on it, but I'm here in Arizona and an element is I want this truck, another importance to last a long time, you know, as long as it can. Well, in Washington state, we're near the water. So the ocean, there's a lot of salt in the air. So our, our vehicles tend to rust, right? Faster than they would in Arizona where it's really dry and there's no salt, <laughs> at least they're not adding salt in the roads and there's no um, ocean. So looking here, I've been looking at trucks, but what I find is every truck that I'm actually interested in is like really like luxurious and like leather seats and a great sound system and a sunroof and you know all of the all of the bells and whistles which is like a far cry from well at least so far what I've seen it's what I'm liking is a far cry from this like high mileage like truck to put your dogs in and go to the beach to this like luxury truck that's more about the luxury than the dogs can fit in it as well as all my toys and that's great but what's the priority? Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So yes. So my actions were speaking louder than the words I was communicating and what I thought I wanted. And then I realized, oh, I just want a really nice vehicle. <laughs> like I want, <laughs> I want like a nice, like luxurious vehicle that feels really good to drive and I'm happy with it. Doesn't mean I'm not going to get a truck because, you know, maybe it is, maybe it's a luxurious truck and I get to not only have this truck to drive that feels great, but also have my dogs with me. Usually when I'm driving, my dogs are with me. So that's not a bad idea to do that. But it just made me realize that what I thought was important wasn't so important. What was really important is having that, that feeling of luxury, feeling good to drive, feeling like a, a truck that I, or a vehicle that I want to be in and drive around the peninsula with. So it kind of changes things a little bit, right? Understanding and recognizing what's important. It does. And that feeling is so critical because I mean, experiences ultimately come back down to feelings, at least while we're here, you know, in our bodies on earth and it's important. Hey, it's important. Feelings are important. So like, which ones do we want? Which feelings and experiences do we want? And it's funny how cars can have a lot of importances around them, whether it's big life decisions or small things, even like a car, you know, it, all of these decisions add up, you know? I yeah. remember um, when, uh, back when I was uh, living with you, Ash, and I didn't have a car, my importance was like, okay, how can I ask people for, for rides? And how can I schedule my time so I can get a ride and all these things? And then at some point I was like, hmm, I think it's more important if I get a car so I can like go places when I want to. Yeah, that's good. And then it's like, okay, I'll get a car. And then I was thinking about, huh well, I don't really like cars that much. I was thinking like, I don't really know what I want. I don't know which ones are important. I don't know. And then long story short, Larry helped me see what car do you want? Like, what car do you actually like? And I said, well, I like the new Teslas. This was like 2020 or something. It's like, so I get one of those. I was like, oh yeah, good idea. Because <laughs> it was important for me to actually like my car. <laughs> right. I had always had a car that I didn't like. I mean, ugh, what an icky, yucky feeling, you know? And if we're in this like mode of empowerment and having a high frequency experience and going back to our prime purpose, it's like having nice feelings and good experiences with these things can actually add up and be really important. So it's important to have a car I actually like. So I ended up getting a car that I liked. Woo! <laughs> there you go. Good job. Yeah. See, and that's the thing. It's like, well, maybe my, my car just remains a dog car and I get myself a not dog car. <laughs> you know? exactly. And I just yeah. add a, add a, you know, hitch or tow hitch and, you know, put my bikes on a rack and Hey, fine. Cool. And the dogs are in the car. There we go. You know, maybe it's just as simple as that. Right. Uh, but it's, definitely it's a good point it's like what did you really want you wanted you wanted a nice car you wanted right. a car you enjoyed driving right yeah and like putting it in action I think the coming back to our prime purpose is really helpful too like I feel like what we're talking about at least in relation to the car I mean having children is of course like 
to me feels like a like a bit different, right? <laughs> the coming back to the pie and purpose and like is looking at these decisions it's like is this going to facilitate this experience of embodying and expressing my true frequency and allowing the environment to reflect it back to me and that's a you know a shortened version of it but even just that it's like it might not be a full yes it might not be a full no but it's like at least in your conscious of it and you're making a choice around that you know yeah. having a vehicle if i ask that for myself having a vehicle that feels really good to drive feels like that's absolutely would be supportive of my prime purpose because it will every time i'm in that vehicle it's going to feel great i'll be so excited to be in there and i'll be expressing my true frequency mm -hmm. right Having children, like I have a similar feeling with that. It's like having children feel, yes, that is supportive, but it's also not like the only way. Same with like the vehicle. It's not the only way to express your true frequency. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I love that. It's such a nice measuring stick of success, right? Of testing the waters of these importances, because there are a lot of importances that aren't necessarily high frequency. And there are some that are. So it's really good to truth it with that prime purpose. So does this thing, let's say buying a car or whatever, getting a dog, buying a house, whatever, does this help facilitate my high frequency expression and allowing the universe to reflect that back to me in the form of physical experiences on earth? If I get a no, I'm not going to do that. And then all of a sudden, like, it doesn't feel as important anymore you know? Right. And if it's a yes, then it's like, oh, good. We're on track. Well, I'll add to that though. Cause this morning we did this exercise, the star tribe, we had our, at subscribe star, we had our after party from the podcast and we did this exercise that Nelly shares in the newsletter. I'll, I'll read that first and then I'll, I'll share what happened. So first of all, we read out the statement, right? So actually, so actually, excuse me, I'll back it up one moment. Pick your importance. So whatever it is, something that you spend a lot of time on, um, maybe it's like, you know, raising your children, maybe it's your job, maybe it's your mystical studies, maybe it's our um, generating wealth, maybe whatever it might be. Okay, something that you spend a lot of your time and focus on. Now, we're going to say this statement, my prime purpose to be here on earth right now, you can say it. My prime purpose to be here on earth now is to embody and express my true frequency is to embody and express my true frequency and allow the environment to reflect it back to me and allow the environment to reflect it back to me in the form of experiences of that same frequency in the form of experiences of that same frequency. Nice. Yay. Thank you. So now you've said it. So second, you're going to ask yourself, does whatever your item is, whatever that importance was, mm -hmm. well, it, does that experience fully reflect back to me, my true frequency? Yes. Nice. Good job. So when I asked it this morning, I was asking about my job and I got to no know at the time, although Looking back at it now, I realized too, there were some things I was thinking about it and interpreting that sentence that was a little different, but I was like, wait a minute, that doesn't, that's not fully right. Because actually like this job fully supports me to be able to have these amazing high frequency experiences and, um, having this, like the ex expressing my high frequency completely. Right. So it wasn't, it wasn't totally accurate one because I had some kind of, I had some, I think uh, maybe firewalls or filters around it, right? But when I, I investigated, I became curious and looked at it a little bit further. And then two, I was looking at it and I thought, you know what it is, is when I'm in that job, when I'm, when I'm doing my job, right? My corporate job, I'm not expressing and um, embodying my true high frequency in it all the time. Mm -hmm. So it's very different, right? Yeah. And so it's not because of the job, but it's because of what I'm choosing and how I'm choosing to behave in it. 
right? So it, I, I, I guess I say it because like, it's good to come, it's data, right? Like that's what Amelia says in the article. We'll, we'll link the article here for the Woo for Thought, but it's data and then start becoming curious about that data and, and not just saying, oh, well, this was a no, so it's out, you know? Yeah. Maybe, like maybe that's totally what it is, but become curious because like for me, my response, my reaction first was no. No, it doesn't do that. And then that's weird because like evidence of my life shows actually is like a really great thing. And then I asked it now and it's like, yes. Yep. Oh. It's, right. So go ahead. Sorry. Right. Right. No, no. That's just a really fascinating case study of like how it can change. And also the perspective of like, what energy are we operating out of from that space? Right. And that can in and of itself make a really big difference and also be a good indicator of, oh, then yeah, I got to like tweak my frequency. So I'm back on track with the prime purpose in that space, right? Right, exactly. And when we tweak, tweak our frequency or like adjust our, like how we are embodying or what we are embodying and how we are expressing ourselves in the world, because it does reflect back to us, if we really are embodying and, and expressing our true frequency, things just fall into place with such ease and supportive nature that if something is dissonant, it's not that we don't take action, but oftentimes it starts to separate itself and becomes so clear that it's like, it's not resonant, right? Or if something is really resonant, it's like even more enhanced because of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, uh, that story reminds me of something that I've been experiencing the last couple of weeks that seems very relevant. So speaking of the corporate job, right, I was in a, a summit, a virtual summit, where a lot of the managers from around the com company came together to have like a workshop, let's say for three days. And, you know, my first attitude towards this was, great we're going to just get extra work and, you know, have to like figure this thing out and I don't want to do it. And Right. And then I thought to myself, I said, okay, back to prime purpose. Does this facilitate? Yeah, da, 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 da. And I was like, I got a yes. And I was like, oh, interesting. All right. How, how do I make that happen? Right. Cause we have to be proactive. And what I realized in doing this activity, we basically had to make a, a presentation, do like a shark tank pitch, like that TV show, if you've ever seen it, to solve a problem and do it in like three days and go from nothing to have a full on solution, which is like a lot of work with people I've never worked with before around the company on Zoom for like four hours straight. This was not my definition of like high frequency experiences reflected back to me, but I realized, oh, actually, this is a really good exercise to practice, to practice connection, to practice working together as a high frequency group, to put the tools in place that we've been learning, uh, you know, with the IBENS method. And so I decided to change my perspective and go from a, to a different importance of this is a really good opportunity to practice in a corporate setting, how to work as a healthy group, especially with, let's say, normies who, you know, they don't know the tools and they're not interested, whatever. And that's fine. So that became my importance for those three days. And I have to say, I was shocked, not only shocked at how like satisfying and fun that activity was, but the ability to connect with people in ways that I hadn't done before. And I did get really good practice using the iBuns tools, right? And I even had, like, there was even a moment where we're in a group meeting and I even said the words, come on guys, our strength is your strength and your strength is our strength. And my fiance was like, I heard you say that on Zoom. I'm like, yes, yes, you did. <laughs> and it was just super cool because long story short, what ended up happening was this connection, this healthy group dynamic that came out of it. And it showed it resonated with people and we ended up, you know, like winning this competition or whatever. And I say competition loosely, but I think what resonated was that we really gelled as a group because we were working out of a space of connection and high frequency. And I made that happen. It wasn't a, a passive thing. I 
very conscientiously made that an importance for those three days. And it was such a big win because I realized like you were sharing with your story, Ash, it's like our attitude with how we go into certain situations or what importances we're carrying at the time. A lot of it has to do with like our frequency and what we're coming out of, what we're going into. And then I realized, oh yeah, we can just as easily tweak it. Cause I could have spent those three days just being like, oh, gosh, I can't believe I have to do more work and it's four hours straight at 7 a.m. And rah, 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 rah. You know, that's not like really that supportive of my prime purpose. When you think about it, that energy. So tweaked it, shifted it, and it's like a whole different thing now, which has been awesome. So I wanted to share that because it's a good example of thinking about not only truthing is this activity, let's say in this case, reflective of my true source frequency and is it indicative of my prime purpose? Yes, no. Just like how you were sharing your story, Ash, of where you were coming from with it and then repositioning it, right? Being proactive and changing it and enabling it to reflect that high frequency. And then thereby the environment did reflect back and it was super awesome. So there you go. Yeah. I love that. That's a really great example. Thank you for sharing that. Cause I think it just shows like the responsibility factor, right? It's like, if, you know, if we're having a challenge with another person or we're getting triggered by them or a situation, like it's no one else's job to fix it and figure it out for us. You know, if I'm triggered by you, Kara, it's not your responsibility to change your behavior. So I'm not triggered, you know? Our triggers are our own responsibility. At the same time, um, there's that element where like, if you're in a toxic relationship, if you're in a dangerous situation, if you're, you know, with somebody who is like, you know, intentionally like really indulging in low frequency and engaging you in low frequency and, um, you know, there's degrees of that, right? But it's like very blatant, obvious, like deal breakers in my book. It's like, well, yeah, then it's your responsibility to um, remove yourself from that dynamic, you know? Right. And that may be setting boundaries. It may be disconnecting from that person. It may be whatever, but it's not that we're going to sit there and just say, oh, I need to change like my perspective on this. Um, and everything else is fine, you know, cause well, no, it's not, you know, we still have to, right. Does that, I hope that makes sense. It's like, we still have to be responsible for how we behave, how we choose to react or respond. And then we're also responsible for the situations and dynamics we put ourselves in. And if those are, are low frequency indulging experiences and situations, then, you know, like we really should need to have a look at that you know, but if it's a high frequency, um, as you tested it, right. It was like, it's supporting your high frequency experience and expression. Well then great. It's like, well then how do I, how do I look at this? How do I adjust to this? Right. How do I have this high frequency, allow this high frequency to express rather than right now, what I'm expressing is something else that's not high frequency. And so I love that example. I think it's a really great thing to look at. That's such a good point. There are extreme cases, right? Of course. But it, it, it is still our responsibility to respond, to remove ourselves from that situation, to get help. Because the reality is, is we are in a co-created world that's going through a split. So there are just realities that we have to be aware of and be street smart about. But at the end of the day, you know, who's the common denominator? we are, if we find ourselves in that experience, it's like, oh, what's going on? Is this supporting my prime purpose here? Being my highest frequency self? Yes, no. Hmm. All right. We can respond. Mm -hmm. So yeah, responsibility is key, but also knowing that at the end of the day, we're not victims, but we also do need to be street smart and to respond in ways that are, are supportive of that prime purpose. Absolutely. Yeah. So cool. cool. Well, would love to hear from you guys, the audience. We'd love to hear about your prime purpose and have some examples of 
maybe some importances that surprised you either in a positive or not so positive way, or even just some examples of um, ways that you can reflect your prime purpose and the experiences you have on earth. So share with us. We'd love to hear from you. And these can be big things or small things, right? Not everything has to be a major life decision. It could be as simple as, you know, what cereal you eat for breakfast that day. <laughs> well, eating this cookie, be supportive of my prime purpose, right? Or yes. <laughs> the importance of this cookie right now, you know, it's just a fascinating exploration. So we'd love to hear from you what happens with your expl exploration. And you can share that with us in Telegram, uh, at iBenz Academy. We're also on Instagram and Facebook. And you can visit our website, iBenzAcademy.com. Yeah. Until next time. Ciao. Bye. Bye.